Hi again, retro gamers, how are we holding up? I drew myself up a pile of shameless the other day of games that I own but never finished, it's pretty embarrassing. But you know what? Forget that list because I've been playing retro games to continue my catch up from the 2011 year of retro gaming project, and nothing's gonna stand in my way. Even you. Let's -a go. So in episode 33, I just played Mario is Missing, <sighs> Gunstar Heroes, Hero the Acrobat, and Rondo of Blood. Coming up after this episode will be Bubsy, Sonic CD, and The Lawnmower Man. But what did I miss in here? Let's find out, shall we? Evolution. Fascinating topic. Apart from the strange group of Americans who denounce evolution as lies, it's pretty much accepted that this is how life came about on our little blue planet. EVO, a Super Nintendo game by Enix, is a game all about evolution. Your task is to evolve from a cute little fishy all the way up to a human, step by step across the millions of years it took for this to actually happen. I never really heard of this game before, probably because it was never released in Australasia or Europe. It was recommended to me by both Eric Margans and Zach Dufois. I think I said that right. Thanks, guys! You know, throughout this whole game, we never actually find out what EVO stands for. Why not just call it Evo? Anyway, whatever. Did anyone ever play that game Spore? No. 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 Yes. I mean, I mean no. No. EVO is like the de-evolvement of Spore. It's full of great ideas, but the technology didn't really exist to properly follow through on them. So you've got your little creature with which you can attack and eat. Once you've got enough evolution points, you can alter yourself. Let's add a few little modifications here. All of the individual levels are broken up by a map screen. Some levels are almost completely pointless. You just run from point A to point B and, and that's it. But a couple of them are proper mazes. And there are some boss levels as well, which are often insultingly difficult. Like, you need to hit them about 20 times, but if you get hit twice, you're dead. It doesn't help that the collision detection in this game is very iffy and occasionally infuriatingly bad. Bottom line, apart from some really interesting concepts at work, and the fun of trying out different body parts on your sick, twisted evolutionary experiment, there really isn't a lot of game here. Grinding for EXP pretty much makes up the entire game, and once you've made your fish, frog, or dinosaur into a powerhouse, you go through the time portal and wake up millions of years later back at level 1, meaning there's more fun grinding ahead. Yippee. Look, EVO is not a terrible game. I was intrigued enough to play through to the end, but it really doesn't stand the test of time. Definitely worth a playthrough, though. I can't think of any other 16-bit games that are anything like it. Landstalker is an RPG for the Mega Drive, played in <sighs> the dreaded isometric viewpoint, like Equinox or that horrible Sonic game. I hate this. I, I know it's supposed to give a better impression of 3D, but it just makes control and viewpoints very frustrating, especially if your 16-bit graphics can't do shadows for your 3D objects. <sighs> anyway, let's see how it plays. So this is the intro here. And you're thinking, oh, please God, I hope I don't actually have to do this in the game. That looks really impossible. Hmm, says the game, we shall see. So our little hero is this fantasy elf called Nigel. <laughs> really? Nigel? Apologies to anyone watching this who might actually be called Nigel, but, well, it's just not a very fantasy heroic kind of name, is it? You notice how all the little elf characters in this game have super huge feet? You know what they say about elves with huge feet? Yeah. They wear huge shoes! <laughs> Maybe that's the reason Nigel Jump sounds just like Sonic the Hedgehog. The whole game moves at a very brisk pace for an RPG. Apart from the viewpoint, I was reminded a bit of that other Mega Drive RPG, The Story of Thor. I'll be looking at that in episode 54. Story of Thor 54. <laughs> Sorry. So I discovered while playing Landstalker that it's only really a moderate RPG. Nigel doesn't level up, and enemies don't give you any kind of experience. You do, however, visit villages, traverse dungeons to find treasure, and you equip lots of bits and pieces. I... 
I, I really wanted to love this, but it wasn't long before tedium and frustration set in. The collision detection of the sprites in this game is woeful. That's partly due to the stupid isometric viewpoint, but fighting enemies can become a very frustrating affair because whether you hit, miss, or dodge just seems so darn inconsistent. There are a few other annoyances too, like the dreadful sound effects. Every enemy in the game goes wah when they're hit and ah when they die. Over and over and over again. No, no, that's not at all annoying. I can't honestly say that I played all the way through Landstalker. From what I gather, the game is actually quite long. I was pretty sure that I'd seen all I wanted to see. One thing to remember about this is that in Japan, Landstalker was released a couple of months before Final Fantasy V, and at almost the exact same time as the almighty Dragon Quest V, in which everyone took days off work to go buy the game. It is a bit sad for the Mega Drive to think that towards the end of 92, Nintendo had Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy, and Sega had... Landstalker. Now, P.S. How does one stalk land? What a bizarre concept. There are definitely some cool elements in this game, and for Mega Drive fans who never knew the wonders of Square or Enix in the 90s, this probably would have been amazing. In the 21st century, though, the best it can do is sit. Goof Troop the Game is based on Goof Troop the Cartoon, which I don't suppose anyone's ever heard of. I, I never had. Maybe it came along at a time when I was out growing cartoons, who knows. The story is about Goofy and his son, who's apparently called Max. But, but wait, if this is Goofy's son, whatever happened to this guy? What, is he left for college or something? Come to think of it, if, if Goofy is breeding, where the heck is the mother? It's a mystery even Bowser would be proud of. Anyway, overthinking aside, Goofy and Max are out fishing one day when Pete and what I can only assume is his son get kidnapped, so Goofy goes to rescue him. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's just pause for a moment while my brain implodes. Pete is now the damsel in distress? This Pete? I'm so confused. Though good on Capcom for taking a cartoon license and perhaps for the very first time not turning it into a platform game. Have a look at it, Goof Troop is unashamedly a love letter to Zelda. There's no overworld or side quests or anything like that though, it's pretty much just like a, a succession of Zelda type dungeons one after the other without any of the extra stuff. It's all broken up into single screen puzzles which brings to mind the Game Boy Zeldas. Now Goofy was never a smart character, but you'll need some degree of wit to pass this game. It's not difficult by any stretch of the imagination, heck <laughs> no, I finished it in a single evening. Look at this, under an hour and a half on my very first run through. But you do get that Zelda-ish feeling of satisfaction when you complete a puzzle that was mildly brain-stumping. Goofy's only real method of attack is picking up and chucking stuff at the baddies. No swords or projectiles here, even the trusty hookshot is only good for a very temporary stun. One of the big gimmicks of this game is that you can actually play it with two people at a time. A precursor to four swords, if you will. I didn't get a chance to try this, so I can't tell you how it fares, but by the looks of it, there's definitely fun to be had there. Hey, look at this. Shinji Mikami was a lead game designer. I tried to find some kind of Resident Evil elements here, but nah, I couldn't find anything. Although I suppose Goofy might be considered the master of unlocking. As with pretty much every Capcom Disney game, it's short and it's easy, but it is sweet. The cartoon that it's based on has disappeared into obscurity, so the game's not likely to get a revival anytime soon. But hey, DuckTales is getting a remake, so you never know. Just before I finish up, I'd like to announce that the blog just got its 50,000th hit. Fantastic. Thank you for visiting. I hope the videos are still entertaining. I'll see you next time. Peace out.